Good day, my name is Doug Ferguson, Bearded Minister, Bearded Minister Sask. I'm here to you to talk about family and uh, personal relationship. I love the Lord my God and my hope is in Him. So at first I'm going to start, I'm going to bow my head in prayer. Please, if you're when you're watching this, bow your head and pray with me. Lord God, I thank you for today. I thank you for opening up my eyes this morning and getting me out of bed, putting my feet on the floor, that you have a purpose and a plan for me, God. I pray for this country, I pray for this city, I pray for this world, Lord, that we would come to know each other a little bit better during these times of crisis and not get out of control, Lord, that you would keep control of your people, Lord. I pray right now for the people. I come before you and I lift the world up to you, God. I love you. We know, I know that there's many of us, including myself at times, that we um, need to repent and get rid of our wicked ways, Lord. So right now, it, for me personally, God, I give you everything. I ask forgiveness for everything, Lord. Please take control of my life. Holy Spirit, rise up within me and take control. That the devil has no, no hold on me or anybody that knows you, Lord. Lord, that those that don't know you, that they would be protected too, Father. I love them. It makes no difference who they are, what they look like. And I know and, and I know that you love them because nothing can separate us from your love. So spread your love right now, Lord, across the world. Spread your Holy Spirit across the world like a cloud of peace, comfort, grace, mercy, joy, happiness, friendship, fellowship, Lord, bring us together in solidarity. In Jesus' name, amen. So back years ago, many, many years ago, when the Israelites traveled in the days of Moses and Abraham and Joshua and Jethro and Pharaohs, that people were different, families were different, and Many people lived together, traveled together, did everything together. And today we don't do that quite as much. We tend to gather together in, in farther and fewer in between and less and less amounts of people at a time. And I realize that we work farther apart, we live farther apart, and we have the abilities to get closer with planes, trains, and automobiles, like the movie, like the movie right? <laughs> um, but, but, but back then they used to travel... For years at a time, um, in upwards of numbers of 600,000 plus people, and they would work together. They lived together. They grew vegetables together. They hunted together. They made peace with one another so they could live together. They weren't, there was no disassociation. It was all association. Uh, family was family and relationship was relationship and I know that uh, I get it that times have changed and work and life in the world is different than it was back then but we've lost the sense of personal relationship and I don't know how we can expect people and children these days to understand a personal relationship with Jesus if we're so disassociated and we don't have that personal relationship with our families, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our aunts and our uncles. Um, back in uh, Exodus 18, chapter 18, uh, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, goes to visit. and So word soon reached Jethro, the priest of Midian and Moses' father-in-law, about all the wonderful things God had done for Moses and his people, the Israelites. He had heard about how the Lord had brought them safely out of Egypt. Some time before this, Moses had, had sent his wife Zipporah and his two sons to live with Jethro, his father-in-law. The name of Moses' first son was Gershom, for Moses said, When the boy was born, I have been a stranger in a foreign land. The name of his second son was Elizer, God of my fathers, my helpers. On to verse 7. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and he bowed to him respectfully and greeted him warmly. They asked about each other's health and then went to Moses' tent to talk further. 
Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to rescue Israel from Pharaoh and the Egyptians. He also told them about the problems they faced, the deliverance of the people, and Jethro was delighted in all the things that had been told to him. The problem, some of the problem was that the people had put God on trial. They were testing him and wondering whether he was with them. In response, God overwhelmed the Amalekite forces in battle. In doing so, he employed an instructive visual aid. Moses stood up on a hill in, fuel, in, in full view, raised hands, and spoke of Moses' power. And God spoke through him. And, it's, and then they, they raised, the raised hands did not speak of Moses' power, but of God's empowering. Through such incidents, the Israelites learned that their freedom was dependent on their faith in God and not their own strength. The staff of Moses comes up many times where he stamps the, sta the and, and the Lord's power comes through. Moving on to Exodus 20, we get to the commandments, which we've gotten away from in this, in this day and age. It's, it's just following the commandments. We don't even understand the two most important ones, never mind the rest of them. Honor your father and mother, and you will live a long and full life in the land. The Lord your God will give you. Honor your personal relationship. Do not murder. This world's in disarray. Do not commit adultery. Happens all the time. Do not steal. Happens all the time. Do not testify falsely against your neighbor. People do it all the time. Do not cover that your neighbor's house. People are jealous all the time. Do not cover your neighbor's wife. People do it all the time. Um, do not covet your, your neighbor's male servant or female servant or ox or donkey or anything else your neighbor owns. What can I say? I don't know what to tell you about that. Um, we've gotten so far away from all of that that sometimes I think we don't even know what's, uh, what's happening with ourselves. And we've gotten away so almost like we don't even understand what sin is anymore. You know, but I guess like in Job, Job chapter 6, verse 2. If my sadness could be weighed and my troubles be put on scales, they would be heavier than all the sands of the sea. We have to trust. Back in Job 4, verse 3. In the past, we have encouraged many a troubled soul to trust in God. That's just even talking to Job. You have supported those who are weak. Your words have strengthened the fall and you steadied those who wavered. But now in trouble strikes, you are faint and broken. Does your reverence for God give you no confidence? Shouldn't you believe that God will care for those that are upright? Now I see one thing that I do see that I'm very excited about, even throughout this coronavirus problem, is that all of these groups and people coming together to help the weak, the, the elderly, the autoimmune, the people like that, and that gives me hope. Hope amidst the suffering. Like there are times when we're so confused and overwhelmed by the pain of life that we, you know, sometimes we wish we could die. But no matter what we do, we're powerless to change things for the better. The weight of the pain and sadness sometimes seems too heavy to bear. We can't see why our heart doesn't just break and allow us death. But Job didn't know the end of his life would be better than the beginning. God eventually restored everything Job had. Everything Job had lost and then some. Job 42, 17. Even when we're pressed to the point of death, there's hope that our life will change. There's always hope. One thing we have is, is, is hope. And so maintain hope. The hope in the Lord, the hope in God, the hope in, uh, you know, it's like Psalm 56, uh, verse 3. But when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Oh God, I praise your word. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? Psalm 57, 1. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Have mercy. I look to you for protection. I will hide beneath the shadow of your wings until this violent storm is past. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah that he covers our, he covers us up and saves us in the and that there is hope that he will take care of it. Holy moly, I'm so excited that even through all of this time, these troubles, you know, teach us to make the most of our times so that we may grow in wisdom. Psalm 90 verse 12. Psalm 91. 
Those who live in the shelter of the Most High and will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare of the Lord, that he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I am trusting him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from the fatal plague. He will shield you with his wings. He will shelter you with his feathers. He was fa his faithful promises are your armor and protection. Hallelujah. I just want to praise Jesus all the time because I know that even though life is hard and tough and, and things are strange and we don't know what's going on, that there's hope. Oh, there's hope. Oh, man, that's so exciting. Oh, Proverbs 7, 17, 17. A friend is always loyal. A brother is born to help in time of need. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs 19, 3. Uh, people ruin their own lives by their own foolish and then are angry at the Lord. Why are we angry with him? We're the ones doing it. We have to look it back. You know, whether you believe in God or not, um, we all understand the story of Adam and Eve. Um, we're all family. Um, there's nothing that we can do that he doesn't know. He knows all that is going on, all that's going to go on. So in, our, in, in my eyes, I just want, if he knows what's going on in my life, I want it to be good. When I get to heaven, I want him and everybody up there to say, good job, Doug. Thank you for holding faith in times of strife and trouble and plagues and coronavirus. He will not leave us nor forsake us. He will not. It's like that's biblical. I don't remember the, the verse, but he will never leave us nor forsake us. Um, Mark 9, uh, verses 38 to 42. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw a man using your name to cast out demons, but we told him to stop because he isn't one of our group. Don't stop him, Jesus said. No one who performs miracles in my name will soon be able to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you even a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I assure you that person will be rewarded. But if, well, we won't get into the negative today. Let's not. So let's talk about cooperation and peace, not, cut, not cutthroat competition. We must characterize our interpersonal relationships. Jesus instructed his disciples to be fully and peace, to fully and peacefully accept others who ministered in his name. He accepted those not under own, his own direct authority, but who are building up the kingdom of God. So must we. If we fail to do so and cause others to lose their faith, faith, we will suffer. I don't want to suffer. I just, I'm just flying through this because there's so much hope. There's so much hope. Um, whether, again, whether you believe in God or not, believe in me. Having had a spiritual awakening that God that God's done what He's doing and He's going to do what He do do what He does, Hallelujah. Um, when we were confronted with the knowledge, like Saul was when he was confronted with the knowledge of what he was doing and he was wrong, and he turned around to being Paul, he found that his life wasn't as perfect as he thought. Self reflection, self righteousness had been his trademark. By letting go of his illusions of power, however, became one of the most powerful men ever, the Apostle Paul. When we're confronted with the knowledge that our life isn't under our control, we have a choice. We can continue in denial, or we can lose the fact, or we can face the fact that we have been blind to some important issues. If we become willing to, to, to be led into recovery, and into a whole new way of life as humanity. We'll find true power and be able to work together. 2 Corinthians 2. Oops. Yeah. Oh, bear with me. There's the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity. Accept the things I cannot change. 
courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians two nine. Paul talking, I wrote to you as I did to find out how far you would go in obeying me. When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive him for whatever it is to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit, so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. We don't always have to be strong, pretend to be perfect. We can live a real life with its daily struggles in a human body, beset with weakness, and still find power above to keep going without being broken or, or crushed. God doesn't just erase our sinful behavior when we identify with Christ. He gets rid of it and gives us a new one. We need to reconcile our dysfunctional relationships. Very important. I have a couple of scriptures I want to read. Just there's some stuff when I was when I was struggling at one time. Not even scriptures, just writings. But one is uh, Psalm fifty six three three and four, which I already said. Uh, have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy, dear Lord. Help me to be sensitive and caring as I serve others. Help me to love others so tenderly, and so tenderly love who so tenderly love and care for me. God pours His love into our hearts to flow out to others' lives. Tough times can teach others trust. Though you cannot see the outcome, trust the Lord. He knows what's best. Be assured he sees your, your trial and he is with you in your test. As doers of the Lord, he will strengthen our actions and match the strength of our words as we confess the power of God. Help us, Lord, not to just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word as well. Teach us to be honest with ourselves about who we are so we walk in your ways and guide others to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Okay, so one of the most important things, and this was a devotion that I did this morning. Um, actually, I'm going to read it from this one here. I'll read it from Romans. I'll read it from here. I'll read it from my tablet here. Romans 8, verse 29 for God knew his people in advance. He chose them to become like his son so that his son would be firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to them. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them glory. Nothing could separate us from God's love. This is one of my favorite passages and I'm going to be, you'll, you'll find I get quite passionate. What we say, what we shall say about such wonderful things as these, if God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God has chosen, for God himself has given us a right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died. And was raised to life for us. Easter is coming. The resurrection is coming. The celebration of Jesus' resurrection is coming. Woo! Can anything separate us from, from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. I cast out that virus in Jesus' name. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. 
No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I get shivers when I read that. Oh, you know, God formed us. Sin, tra sin, sin deformed us. Jesus transforms us. We are incredibly, all of us, the body of Christ. And though we, we may not act like our Father, there's no greater truth than this. We are His. Unalteringly, He loves us. Undyingly, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Had God not said those words, I'd be a fool to speak them. But since He did, I'm a fool not to believe them. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Embrace this truth. You think you've committed an act that places you outside his love? A treason, a betrayal, an aborted promise? You think he would love you more if you hadn't done it? You think he would love you more if you did more? You think if you were better, his love would be deeper? Wrong, wrong, wrong. God's love is not human. His love is not normal. His love sees your sin and he loves you still. Does he approve of your error? Or your error? No. Do you need to repent? Yes. You know, there's nothing wrong with self-reflection and self-change, self-care and getting rid of the evil stuff that we do, the problems, the, the mistakes, the bad choice that we make and replace them with good stuff. And it all works together. Our body will work together. His ego needs no apology. His love needs no bolstering. And he could not love you more than he loves you right now. Our God is a good God. He's a God of everlasting love. Stepping from the throne, he removed his robe of light and wrapped him around, wrapped himself in skin, pigmented human skin. The light of the universe entered a dark, wet womb. He, who angels worship, nestled in the placenta of a peasant, and who was birthed into a cold night and slept on a cow's hay. He only did three years of ministry. And in that three years, you wonder how long his love will last? He died on the cross for us. So I'm going to say it again. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor ruling spirits, nothing now, nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us, nothing below us, nothing else in the whole world, not even hell itself, can separate us from God's love. I ask, I humbly ask and come before you, each and every person in this world, each and every person that watches this or listens to this, please spread this message of love. Please spread the message that we have to need to get back to personal relationship. Teach our children, teach our families, teach our mothers, teach our fathers, whomever that we don't have that personal relationship with, let's get together. Let's do what we can, even if it's through, if it's through FaceTime, it's use, what, use the tools we have, but let's get face to face with each other as best we can. Regardless of denomination, I don't care what color your skin is, what, your, what sexual orientation you are, how rich or poor you are, we need to work together. One body, one stick, one staff. Humanity is one. We are one together. Let us work towards nothing separating our love for each other. Like God loves us. As my shirt says here, let's be better together. Love, 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 love. Let's be better together. I'm going to, whether you believe in God or not, again, I say this every time, just Please respect the ones that do. And I'm going to say a quick prayer. 
and close. I love you. God, I come before you again, humbly and, and beaten and broken. Lord, I ask that you would dig right into my soul and my heart and my body and renew and transform me to be closer to you and be more like you, that I can spread your love, that you love me, which you love me with, that nothing can separate the love I have for others as the love you have for me. Lord, I pray for every person in this world that you would give that same message of love. Lord, that you would touch them and speak to them and minister to them, whether they believe in God or not, just to become better and love one another. Lord, that we would not fight or compete or challenge or, or contest each other, but to walk each walk in, 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 in a spirit of love, a spirit of connection, a spirit of relationship. Lord, that we would come to our grandmas, our, our, our kids, our other families, our extended families, our neighbor's father, and love them. For the two greatest commandments, Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor. Our neighbor being everybody in the world. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would touch each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, people. I love you. I want you to have the best day possible. Stay safe. Stay honest. Wash your hands. Uh, help one another if you are not one of the... Uh, not one of the autoimmune or the, the what's the right word, um, susceptible to disease. Please help others. Help others in love. We'll help others in, in spirit. And, and what you do will come back to you. That I promise and I speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, boys and girls, people, mom, dad, everybody else. <laughs>